Hey everyone, Brandon here with Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Uh, we've got a spoiler alert to give from minute 31 to about 39. We will be talking about Godzilla in full detail, so if you do not want to hear it, please skip forward and enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to episode 50 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Feels like an eternity since we last recorded. It's been a while. Yeah. The, the last one was when we did the game show. It was like three weeks ago. Something like that. It's been a while. Yeah. Sound like a Nickelback song. So what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, huh? Brad's not looking at me. I don't know why. He's like averting his gaze. I don't like that question. You know that. Uh oh. So you got some treasure? Yeah. Oh, okay. How are we going to determine what the punishment is? What do you mean? I guess there'll be no punishment or price? No, I don't. I don't. How many pieces of treasure do you have? No, there's got to be a punishment. <laughs> How are you going to determine that? For the uh, podcast world, Brad put up one finger to indicate the other. <laughs> it's good pot, I think. And he doesn't have his list, so I guess we could make one real quick. You're going to pause it? Yep. So, Brad, you have one item? I do. Okay. Did you want to reveal it, or is it pretty nice? It's pretty good. I'll just reveal some of mine, then, that I have. What do you mean, some of yours? How many do you have? Seven. What? What? <laughs> okay, cool. Seven items. I have a, uh, a secret weapon. Who's your secret weapon, Willie? No. My secret weapon's a store. What store? It's very secret if he told you. Oh, I think he wants to tell me. That's why he brought it yeah. up. What's this? Oh, yes. A oh, dimple man. outlet store? <laughs> <laughs> Where's that at? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm sure they don't put good stuff in their outlet store. Buy two, get one free. All their games were two ninety nine. It's gonna be a lot of shitty games with that. I've only got three of those. Three of those shitty games. Here's the first one. <laughs> Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver two. <laughs> What's that work? Uh, I think it's like eight. Just put it up front if it's a PlayStation 2 game. I Ninja for Play. That's worth more on GameCube, isn't it? Yeah, but I couldn't find it on GameCube. Okay. Vampire Knight. I never heard of that. Yeah, it's for 10 bucks. And I got that one for free. Awesome. This game I got at the Art and Dimple. But I. It's it's worth twenty five. You can say it. I don't care. If oh, I know. it's worth twenty five. So I had to use dimple points, dimple water to get twenty percent off, so I could buy it. So it's under the fifty percent mark. Okay. Well, oh, Wild Arms four. That's cool. I never played any of the Wild Wild Arms games. Part two is really good if you get a chance. Is that for PlayStation One? Mm hmm. And it's on the network, so you could download it. So what's your item? I thought you had two. Maybe you're just saying that to make me scared. Oh, it's a Nintendo 64 game. Banjo Tooie. That's awesome. Worth 20. Oh, okay. That's a nice chunk. Well, I lost. I still have more items. I know you do. You said you had seven. How many is that? Four? Mm -hmm. oh, I've got two more. Flyer six. Oh, so your but your twenty five dollar one is void, right? The outlet says it's like right next to the store. It's at the record store. <laughs> like by the shutters? Around the corner, yeah. Where the record store used to be. So this one's twenty six. Oh man. Tiny Toon All Stars complete? Is it complete? Yeah, I, I hope so. Oh, you didn't open it to check? Oh, oh. 
So 15. Dang it. It's like Shadow Run, though. <sighs> this one, I don't know if. I think we're gonna keep this one. Oh, yeah? Oh, yes, we are. How much is that worth? You saw it? No. I think 13. Joe and Mac <laughs> for Nintendo. That's heck of tight. Yeah, we'll keep that. So, it, oh, yeah, you, I guess you won. That's tight. I'll put that in my bag. Alright, so I'm spinning the Wheel of Punishment. Ready? You get three spins, right? Yep. Go ahead. Three. Corn Dog. Eight. Shockmaster. <laughs> Five. Icicle. I'm going for the Shockmaster. Alright, roll my. And where does the Shockmaster have to go? Do you get to choose, or...? I'm putting it on his butt. <laughs> That'd be funny. If you want. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, five. Icicle. Two. Ass punch. <laughs> <laughs> five. Icicle. Oh, man. Reroll, since it's the same number. <laughs> Two. Reroll. Say ass punch. Ass punch. <laughs> Three. Corn dog. <laughs> oh man. Punishment. You know you're getting a corn dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Are you sure you don't want to do an ass punch? No, I don't want to. I don't have tape. I can't tape up my wrist. <laughs> I'm glad I went to the bathroom before I came <laughs> over. Wait, so right now, Brad is going to get a Shockmaster on the butt and a corn dog. Corn dog first, followed by the Shockmaster. <laughs> I've just got one thing to say. Have mercy. <laughs> Alright, I'm recording so you guys go whenever. Oh no, this is gonna suck. Get the sweet spot. No oh no, not right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh! That's like dog bed. Oh! <laughs> oh! oh <laughs> I only used about 30% oh, power, too. Oh! <laughs> you want to bring the shot master down there? No. <laughs> oh! Oh! I see like still. Well, we could shock you while you're laying no. down. <laughs> that fucking burn. I <laughs> like did this too. Like that. <laughs> Don't matter. <laughs> Turn on balls. Yeah, now you know how it feels. Man. I think I did mine harder though. <laughs> I think so too. Oh, I'm going to shoot myself. <laughs> you feel like you're going to shoot yourself? No. No? Uh, hopefully I don't. <laughs> So I guess we'll pull it down and then we'll pull it back up for the video. You can just come in with your shirt. Like if you don't want to show your butt. You don't yeah. want your buttocks on video, is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. It's so awkward. <laughs> awkward. <laughs> oh, that's gonna hurt. <laughs> I won't record it. I won't do a video recording if you don't want me to. Or you could do it on his face, like his face of facial facial expression. Like a porno, like yeah. You're watching a girl. <laughs> or here, you can pull it down and see if you can see it. But more. I want to see your butt vibrating. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, we could uh, do it for a few seconds so you could get the butt vibrating, and then we could get his face. Okay, just do it right now to see. Do it like a four right now. Do you know how to use it? You never used it, huh? Where's the up button? Don't do needles. <laughs> Where's the up? Okay, that's funny. Oh, okay. You have your open okay. one. I guess I should have told you that, huh? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I told you that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Those are needles. <laughs> Alright, well, we want to see your butt. But is it shaking? Let me see. Bend over some more? Bend over some more. Ah!
I'm not counting. Oh, oh okay. Okay, okay. Ready? No, hold on. <laughs> ready? If I get down, can you cover it up and still see it? Oh, yeah, I, no. I'm just doing your face. Yeah, you know? I'm, not, I'm not gonna video record your ass if you don't want me to. <laughs> well, you can if it's covered up, and I just want to see if you, you can, can cover see it up. Cover it up. But I'm gonna see it vibrate. <laughs> you can't see it vibrate if it's covered. Are you sure? Yeah. And it's not funny. No, you can't see it. It's not moving. <sighs> All right, get up. Go on. I gotta put the thing back on. It's falling off. Okay. Ready? It's not on ten yet. Nah, I didn't. It's like it's not doing anything. Look, it's just doing this. It also looks like it's vibrating. Here, what is this mean? Were you just flexing your ass or something? No. <laughs> Did you okay. say there was a way to set the pen and then? Ah! 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 <laughs> Does N stand for needle? <laughs> yeah, you're gonna help me take it off. <laughs> Dang, you get dinner about four <laughs> Ah, still making my butt tingle. <laughs> oh, did you get this at nipple? No, at that generic game shop. Oh, that's all right. Ah. <sighs> so, uh, you know when you said, "Let me find the sweet spot." I was hoping you were gonna hit right there because I was just on my side of my butt cheek. Oh, uh, <laughs> but you didn't. You moved it over some. <laughs> right. So, uh, we had some pretty cool. We took a week off from recording uh, to. Uh, relax and because I wasn't prepared for this uh, award ceremony that we're doing so uh, uh, should we bring up the award ceremony sure so we're doing giving out awards for different categories for the for our podcast the, this is our 50th episode hitting a milestone so we're gonna give out some awards um, you know, of our, of our favorite moments. We have different categories, so uh, of course, you know, you guys will find out about that when we get to it. Yeah. Brad and I took our wives to Napa this weekend, or I guess it was Calistoga, a few miles outside of Napa, and Nick played in a poker tournament. A high, high stakes poker tournament. Yeah. Very high stakes. You want me to go on to that first? or? Sure. Okay. Uh, so I went up to Oroville, this casino called Feather Falls. Uh, uh, a couple days ago, with a couple of buddies of mine. Well, that's pretty appropriate. Goldville, Oroville. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were talking about Feather Falls. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it was a seventy dollar tournament. Uh, had a twenty five hundred dollar guarantee, which means that you know the, the payout's going to be twenty five hundred dollars whether ten people sign up or a hundred people sign up. Turned out that there were sixty five people, I believe. And first place paid like twelve hundred and fifty bucks or something like that. Uh, but anyway, so um, I bought in. I I'm just gonna go over a couple of uh, major hands. The, these are more significant because I made rookie errors. <laughs> I don't think they ended up costing me anything in, in, in hindsight, but it's not something that I would generally do. Uh, about two or three hands into the tournament, I think we started out with like 7,500 chips, and the the blinds are like 2550 or maybe a 50, 100. So, a lot, you know, our stacks are very big in, compared to how many blinds we have. Um, and I got pocket nines, <clears throat> and I made a standard raise pre flop to three times whatever the blind was. I got three or four callers, and the flop came nine nine eight. And I, again, I have pocket nines. Wow, so quads. It's tight. And one of the guys that was that was to act before me, post flop, let out. And I was like, why is this guy letting leading out? I thought maybe he had like a ten jack type of hand, so eight, nine, ten jack, maybe he had an open and a straight draw or something like that. <clears throat> and 
And generally, when you get flop a big hand like that, you don't want to bet or raise anything because you want people to stay in and make their hands. But I, I went the other way. I went ahead and re-raised him. Uh, everyone else folded, but he call, he thought about it for a couple seconds, and he called me. Uh, the turn, I, I can't remember what it was. I think it might have been a 10. I think it was a 10. So if he had 10 jack, then he, he just made a pair of 10, which is also a pretty good hand considering uh, the situation. He checked to me. And at this point, there was maybe like five, six, no, probably more like six or seven hundred chips in the pot. And I'd meant to bet 350. And instead, I bet 3,500. Oh, man. <laughs> I just, because I hadn't played tournament poker for a while, and I just grabbed some chips. And I was like, oh, this looks like 350. And I threw it out there. And the guy actually thought about it for a second. I was like, oh, man, this might actually work. <laughs> <laughs> but eventually, he folded. And then everyone was like, Everyone at the table was kind of like looking at me. I was like, "Well, it worked, didn't it?" I didn't show my hand. I just, I just folded my hand. I was like, "Well, he folded, so I won, right?" That's heck of yeah, I guess he, that's true. So anyway, I don't, I don't know. Maybe he would have called a smaller bet. Maybe I would have got some more chips out of that pot. But who knows? It was in the beginning of the tournament. And you don't really accumulate a whole lot of chips at that stage in the tournament, anyway. Uh, what was the other thing that I'd done? Oh, <clears throat> I had. What did I have? Oh, I had pocket nines again, <laughs> interestingly enough. Uh, I made a standard raise. I got one caller, and he was um, on the button, which means he's last to act pre-flop, or excuse me, uh, post-flop. And the flop came seven, eight, nine, all diamonds. So I flopped top set, but at the same time, uh, you know, it's all it's a very straight board, so if anyone had 10 jacks, 6, 10, uh, any combination of like 10-9 they flop a straight draw but also all diamonds mm -hmm. makes it very easy for someone to be have a flush or be on a flush draw uh, so I checked it the guy behind me goes goes ahead and bets it and I call because I mean it, it's, top set is still a very strong hand I can fill up and make a, a full house uh, the turn is a 10 and I check other guy checks and the river is like a 7 or something uh, uh, no yeah, I think it was a seven. And I check. So at this point, the board is paired. Mm -hmm. I have nine full of sevens. And the other guy makes a really small bet, and I just call. The reason I just call is because I thought, for some reason, I thought the flop was like six, eight, nine. Mm -hmm. And I thought the seven on the board made it made it so that the straight was on the board, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I, and I showed my hand, and everyone was like why did you not raise your full house? Mm -hmm. And I, I told him, honestly, I, I seriously thought the straight was on the board. But again, the, the other guy turned out all he had was pocket teams, which is obviously a very good hand. But I, I had him beat even on the flop because I flopped top set. And he didn't even have a diamond in his hand, so he didn't have any uh, fluster or anything like that. So that was kind of interesting. If, even if I had raised him, he probably would have folded. So that didn't matter at all. Uh, and then the hands... Uh, that I went out on. Like I text messaged Brad at the break about an hour after starting. I increased my stack from 7,000 to 14,000, which is pretty good. I mean, in tournament poker, you always want to be accumulating chips. <clears throat> but I also told him there's a long way to go because, like I said, there were 65 people. Uh, there, they were allowing uh, rebuys oh, wow. until that spot. So, I mean, who knows how many people rebought, so there could be even more money in the in the pot. But also, there's still 65 people there. No one had busted by that time because anyone who had busted had just rebought. Uh, so I made it to the next break, but I didn't have very many chips, and I got into desperation mode because it's a tournament and tournament poker. The blinds keep going up and up and up. Uh, eventually, I got forced in with a eight nine suited, like I shoved, and I got like four or five callers. Oh man! <laughs> it was kind of a funny. I'm not going to tell the whole story, but it, it it ended up that I actually won the hand with a pair of eights. And there was actually action after the flop. Generally, when someone's all in, everyone else who's in the hand will check it down because mm -hmm. they just want to eliminate someone. But this guy bet his flush draw, and this other person called with a higher flush draw. So all they had were like, was like high cards with with you know flush potential, but neither of them hit either of their pairs or, or any flushes. So I actually won that hand and quadrupled up. But I was so small at that time, it didn't really matter. So the very next hand, I had like king queen suited, and I was on the I was in the big line, and uh. Like four or five people had limped in. It was enough for me to. I had like ten big blinds at that point, or something like that. So I went ahead and shoved it all in. I got called by a guy with pocket sixes, and the pocket sixes held up. I never hit a pair. It's a, it's a coin flip, right? When you're basically when you have two overcards versus a pair, and your heads up pre-flop all in, 
it's a coin flip. I mean, 50% of the time I'm going to win it, 50% of the time I'm mm-hmm. going to lose it. But if I had won that one, I would have been in decent shape to actually, you know, play real poker for the rest of the time. So that was my adventure. Uh, not successful, but, you know, that's how a tone of poker is. Yep. So Napa was fun. Yeah, it was. Posted a lot of pictures. Yep. I think that's the most pictures I ever posted in my life. <laughs> uh, we went to go to, uh, tour the castle, which was amazing. Yeah, the castle was really cool. We got to, we bought the tour and we went down to do the tasting, but they told us their tasting room was full, so we got the VIP tasting room, which is sweet. Found out that we're not wet red wine people. No. The red wine is gross. It tastes really bitter. This one, the, the, we got, we each got to choose like five wines to try from the list. And I got this one because it was called The Bandit. But the bandit, it was the like the Italian version. Bandito? No, it wasn't Bandito. That was it was like I don't know something whatever Italian for bandit is. And kind of find out the lady told me it's a combination of six different red wines. So like, oh, this might be good. She's like, it's not like eighty dollars a bottle. I was like, all right, I'll try it. It was so gross. <laughs> it was disgusting. I've had wine maybe three or four times in my life. And you're right, every time I've had red wine, it's just, I, I can't even hardly swallow it. We did find uh, this one wine that was really good. Um, they infuse, it's a white wine they infuse with honey. Mm. And you could drink that stuff like nectar. The Gewürztraminer? Uh, Wiener? No, the, uh, the other one. Mm-hmm. The Gewürztraminer Wiener was really good because you couldn't, didn't taste any alcohol from no, it. It was like and, juice. And they let the grapes ferment for like two months more. And it gets a disease called protitis, but it makes a really good flavor for some reason. You don't get catch the disease yourself, of course, but it tastes just like grape juice, and it it's got a high alcohol content. That was my favorite one. <laughs> is that a, is that one of the expensive ones? You it was. A, I bought it. It was only forty dollars a bottle, but I had to bring that to SummerSlam for drinking. Yeah, uh, and you could buy it online too. Oh, okay. I found out you could buy their stuff online because. The, the castle wine, they don't disperse it in any other store. You have to buy it there. Right. And it's uh, 350 milliliters, so it's a skinnier bottle, but it's really good. Hmm. I'm going to have to get some for SummerSlam. 40 bucks is pretty expensive, but I, maybe in the wine world it's not. <laughs> it, it's, it's really not because they had like $3,000 a bottle. I was like, Dang. okay. <laughs> but it was, um, it's a white wine, so it's good. It's really good. And then the one you're talking about, it it's still got a, um, it still tastes like the Gewürztraminer, but it's a little bit more, so you could taste the wine in it. On the other one, you can't. That's what I like about it. Mm. And then you got the one, the... Um, Fantasia? Fantasia. It's a red wine, but they stopped the fer- fermentation process, so it's only 70% or 7% alcohol. And it doesn't taste like red wine. It tastes like juice, I guess. Yeah. It was good. Have you guys tried uh, Adam Carolla's drink, the Mangria? No, no. I had it. Oh, I went to one of his uh, live recordings in San Francisco, and just because I was there, I was seeing Adam Carolla. I figured I might as well give it a shot. It was like five dollars for a small glass, uh, but it, it was good. I, I liked it. Hmm. It was sweet enough, and apparently it had a pretty high alcohol content. But I, I think the club might have mixed it with something too. But anyway, I would I would recommend it. Oh, okay. So, does he sell that online? Yeah, you can also buy it at like Bevmo. And oh, okay, maybe I'll get some of that for SummerSlam. Uh, so, the next thing I want to talk about, there's, uh, I want to talk about the mud bath. Okay. And the Jolie. Okay, okay. The the mud bath, it was really cool. We each got one. Uh, we got uh, ourselves and our wife went into a, the, our own room. Brandon had his own room. I had my own room. And it was two big tubs full of hot sulfuric mud now if you guys have never had a mud bath when you walk in it it smells like you walked into ten thousand porta potties it like, smells like so gross minutes, yeah it's because it's sulfur oh it's so bad i i had to breathe through my mouth the whole time we were in there sulfur doesn't make me think of porta potties no, it smelled like shit <laughs> like literally feces yeah, yeah. it smelled like rot, uh, rotten eggs to me it's, okay yeah I, I i i know that smell yeah but that doesn't smell like a porta potty no <laughs> maybe someone shit in your mud yeah <laughs> it was gross it smelled so bad they don't change the mud out when people 
Because I like the smell of like matches and that sulfur. Like no, when you strike a match. No, no not oh, really. No, that's different. Uh, have you been to uh, Lassen? No. There's a... I don't know what the technical name is, but there's like a boiling mud there as well. And it smells... Has, mm. I, I'm familiar with the smell. And I, you're right. It smells like it smells like rotten eggs is what it smells yeah. like. That's what it smelled like to me. And so, you, so she was telling us when you get in... Of, of course, I was going to go naked whether I could or not. Right. So she said you're allowed to get naked. Did you ask a question? No. Oh, okay. So... She says to get in the mud, but don't go to the very bottom because the very bottom is very, very hot of the tub. So you, you get in the mud bath, but you don't get in. When you sit on the mud, it, it holds you. Yeah. Like you're sitting in a chair. So you have to kind of wiggle your way down into it and cover yourself up with the mud because it's so thick. And I was in there getting, you know, all good. Karen was having a hard time because she's so short and the thing was kind of tall. So the lady knocked on the door and said, you ready? You ready? And Karen was like, ah, and she just, like, jumped in. And I was like, oh, no injuries there. So sat down in there. Just felt I bet if you weren't there, she would have got injured for some reason. Probably. <laughs> what is the lady doing who says, you ready, you ready? What is she doing for you? She, she's going to come in and put a facial, facial mask on your face while you get the mud bath. Gotcha. And she took our picture. She didn't take her picture, bitch. No. <laughs> um but it just felt really good. You're only in there for like 10 or 12 minutes, and then you get to like hose yourself off like a power wash. Yeah, you get you, you're the, each couple gets into a shower, and you get to hose yourself off. It's pretty funny. Yeah. I kept trying to spray Jamila in her private part. She's like, stop it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did that too. Um, I was and, like, I do it, and I sprayed it on mine, and she was like oh, shaking her head. I put my leg up on the bench and put <laughs> the nozzle underneath, and it was like... <laughs> Elevating my balls like that. <laughs> oh, that could get it. it uh, I got heck of dingleberries though. Like oh, a man. whole bunch, the mud just clumped to my butt hair. Not like mine. A bed. Um, yeah, and then after you get the shower, you go sit in a hot tub to get a mineral bath. But the water up there is, is amazing. Like in the pools, the swimming pools in the hotels, it's like so clean filling. Mm. No chlorine, which doesn't freak me out. They have. Um, How many times you pee in that pool? <sighs> It was like three or four times. <laughs> Just like little dribbles. <laughs> One big dribble in the beginning, then multiple <laughs> ones throughout. As people were swimming by, you'd stop <laughs> and then keep going. No, when you stop, it's obvious. <laughs> but that was cool. The mud bath was a really good experience. I'd do it again if it wasn't so expensive. Nick sent us a text to plan our own man, man spa day, so I think we should do that, but I don't know what we want to do. Like if we were just want to go get some facials or whatever. I don't know. I don't think it could be that expensive though. Yeah, the mud bath is like $120. A couple. It was $120 a couple. Oh, was it? Yeah. Well, That's not horrible. No. There's also like places where you could get cheap massages in town and stuff. But I want to be pampered, like have the robe and the... And it looked like how they did on Legends House. Yes. Yeah. That's what I was more thinking. Like, yeah, that sounds good. Not just like massages where we each go in and get a massage because we could do that whenever and our wives could give us one. But like, um, like I'll sit in and get manicures and facials. And then the last thing I want to talk about is the uh, restaurant we went to, which was called Jolie. It's really good. Uh, you could do a tasting menu where each course is probably between 25 and $32. But you could do a tasting menu for fifty-five dollars, where you get about two to three bites of four of their main courses. It was really good. I tried the veal sweetbreads, which is the thymus gland of the animal. So they got a baby cow and ripped out its thymus gland, <laughs> and it was so fucking good. They deep fried it too. Yeah, it was a uh, chicken fried. No, it was a um, what they call it? Was they call it chicken fried sweetbreads? Did they? Oh man, it was so good with the um, chorizo glaze and the sweet corn. Mm-hmm. And that place turned me on to goat cheese because I got, for one of my courses, uh, uh, asparagus mm. strawberry goat cheese. It was amazing. And we're cons consuming goat cheese tonight, right? Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Have you ever had it? I think so. It's, it's good. It's a little tangy, but it's good. Mm -hmm. I dig it. Yeah. And then uh, what else did we try? We tried. I tried the roasted duck breast, which was good. 
and the uh, this bouillabaisse base, bouillon base is a bunch of different seafoods in a bowl with a um, like a marinara soup sauce on with some bread. It was good. Jamila got the fried uh, zucchini blossom stuffed with cheese, ricotta cheese, and I also got the flat iron steak, which I wasn't impressed with at all. The halibut was really good. The Alaskan halibut. Mm-hmm. But the dessert was amazing. Oh, yeah. The, uh, so we each got a pick of dessert, and I picked the key lime pie. Karen, Everybody in the on the table picked Karen the key lime pie. key lime pie. Jamila picked key lime pie, and Brennan said, you know what? I'll have the coconut cream pie. <laughs> and she said, you know, we're, we're the waitress. We're famous for our coconut cream pie. And Brennan just gave this nod, like, all <laughs> Of entitlement. Like, <laughs> like that's right. I get the enti- I get the entitlement pie, <laughs> but it was very lackluster. He said the cre- the key lime pie was far superior. It was. It had a macadamia cookie on the bottom of it. Mm. My coconut cream pie was so bland. Mm. It was disappointing. Very disappointing for that that place. Yeah, but it's a cool little town. Everything's close, like f- only five minutes away. Yeah, it's crazy. The castle was five minutes away. We went to the petrified forest, which was like maybe seven minutes away. It was all. It was a nice little fun trip. How many minutes are we at? Thirty-two. You're going to Godzilla and then the war show. Oh yeah, I forgot about Godzilla. So yeah. Godzilla is a <laughs> fucking badass movie. If you wanted to, I wasn't done talking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted to, we could do the, like split it up where we kind of tease the mm-hmm. the words and do the words on the next one. Okay. Okay. So you could say Godzilla, Godzilla is a fucking badass movie. <laughs> I didn't know any. I didn't know anything going into this movie except Godzilla was going to be in it, and I knew Brian Cranston was in it. I didn't know uh, the star from Kickass is in it. Oh yeah, I know that. Yeah, and I did not know there were more monsters than Godzilla in it. When I I took Willie and Jordan to go see it, and when you see that thing's arm come out of the cocoon, you're like, that's not fucking Godzilla. <laughs> and Jordan, he's like, what is that? I said, that's what he fights. <laughs> And then so, um, uh, Jordan said, Willie's like, what? Jordan says, that's what Godzilla's going to fight. And then when you find out that it was talking, you think it's talking to Godzilla, yeah. but it's not. It's like, <laughs> I was like, there's two on one? Oh, this is going to be so good. <laughs> that was awesome. That was so amazing. And when he roars... That like thirty second roar, yeah. I just got so juiced. Yeah, that was that was really cool. I took Logan and Sam to see it after you saw it because you're like, go see it. Yeah. So I was like, let's go see it. And then so, and the show we went to was 3D, and I didn't know it was going to be mm-hmm. 3D, but 3D was awesome in it. I loved it so much. I think that's going to be the first 3D movie I see on my Blu-ray. I have the Avengers, I just haven't watched it yet, but. Um, at the end, like when he's walking back to the ocean, and it said "King of Monsters," did you get misty eyed? I was like, <laughs> "Fuck yeah, he's the king of oh, monsters!" Oh man, I, just, I got tears in my eyes. I was like, "This is a beautiful moment." <laughs> I, my favorite part was when his tail was lighting up blue. I was like, "Oh fuck!" Here comes the fire, and Jordan was like, "I didn't know he breathes fire, like atomic fire." <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh and the, the the blue was coming on his tail and i was like oh here comes sam and sam's like what and then he was like he just shot the fire out and i was like yeah look there it is and at the end when he blew the when he was ripping open the jaws and then i was like oh he's gonna rip his jaws open but no he breathed the fire down the monster's oh, throat yes. and i was like suck on that <laughs> <laughs> muto <laughs> Female Muto. <laughs> they didn't give them names, did they? They no. just call them Muto. Yeah. But that's like a generic term for, what is it, like, unidentified terrestrial... Mutated, un- unidentified uh, ter- terrestrial organism. And then did you, did you catch the Mothra? The Mothra, yeah. The, uh, there's a glass tank labeled Mothra. <laughs> and then in the school they had, like, the pink pterodon. Like Rodan? Yeah. Oh, man, I can't wait for part two. It's already in production. Man, King Ghidorah. Can you imagine? Gamera. Gamera won't be on a Godzilla movie, but they'll have, like, Mothra come with Rodan fighting King Ghidorah with Godzilla. That'd be hecka tight. 
and you, you know they're going they're probably going to do a Godzilla Mothra one to, to introduce the pupa and then the butterfly, mm-hmm. the moth. That'd be heck of a time. And then something else has to come and they have to team up, like something of King greater Ghidorah, evil. Mecha Godzilla. He's like, you can see him flying in space. I'll be like the stinger at the end of part two as I'm flying in space. King Ghidorah? Oh, man. That'd be crazy. Or Destroya. Destroyer was a real. I don't remember that one. Uh, when I was doing my research for the Toho <clears throat> monsters, he like killed one of Godzilla's family members. Maybe he's the one that killed the one that was. Uh, 1954. Yeah. Maybe. Oh man. Destroyer. Can't wait for the second one. I was like, "Fuck, X Men! I'm gonna go see Godzilla <laughs> again." If you notice that all we're talking about is Godzilla fighting monsters, right? Yeah. Who the fuck cares about Brian Cranston and what is his name, Aaron Tyler Johnston or whatever his name is? They did it for the females. The females <laughs> need a story. But if you go back in, in the Godzilla movies, we had on VHT or VHS mm-hmm. versus Megalon, Godzilla versus Megalon. They always have a oh the people. We were like, forget these people. We just want to see the monsters. Right. It's a huge build up for like two hours. You don't get to see Godzilla until like an hour and a half into that into those films. This one took a while, too. Yeah. You got to see the Muto, I guess, but you didn't get to see Godzilla until probably like an hour in. Yeah. And even then, he was submerged most of the time. Mm-hmm. I guess he, they did a little battling um, on Hawaii at the airport. That was I was cool. getting hecka mad because whenever they were about to fight, yeah. they cut away. I was yeah. like, they yeah. better not try to just make this all about the humans. That's what I thought, too. They were going to make it about the humans because whenever they, tried, they, they would cut away, the Ken Watanabe, he was like, let them fight. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> What else was that guy in? Uh, Inception. Inception. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm hoping that, that you said they're already in production mm-hmm. for a sequel, that they'll just at least minimize the amount of human acting and maximize the amount of monsters. Oh, them. yeah. That's what people want to see. Less human, more monster. Yeah. I mean, I understand that they have to do a backstory, especially because this is like the reboot. They're got kind of starting it over so you have to do the backstory as to how the mutos came about and how they're surviving off like the center of the earth or whatever it is that it, that they're doing but uh yeah i'm hoping the next one they don't have to you know share so much information they just get straight to okay godzilla's coming to save us <laughs> yeah and not try to blow them up i wish that godzilla would have ate that guy the the american colonel who's like let's blow him up he should have just ate him. And like, see, see what you get. <laughs> He's like the only human he eats. I think uh, he had a worse punishment seeing what his actions caused. He, oh. he has to live with that. <laughs> he, he, he was crying on his way back to the ocean. <laughs> Are you talking about the Godzilla or the old guy? The old guy. Oh, okay, yeah, fuck him. But yeah, I, I enjoyed the movie a lot, and I would definitely like to see another one. But my only gripe was I would like to have seen more monsters. Of course, yeah. And the fact that they had the the female was it, I, I think it was the female one was the one that was that walked right. Yeah. And she came out of some facility in Arizona or no, uh, like yeah in Nevada. Yeah. Happened to ha- go across Las Vegas. <laughs> <It's just> like <laughs> okay, <laughs> there, there are many paths through the desert, and it just happens to go through Las Vegas. Good for the movie, I guess. And the way uh, Brian Cranston died, you were like, oh, okay, he's dead? I guess. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, he was sitting there grieving, and like, he zipped him up. I was like, okay. Oh, that's right. That When that first monster came about? Yeah. And like he got like he fell off like a little uh, catwalk or something like yeah, that? Yeah, he fell off the catwalk, and then he was in the ambulance with the neck brace, and then he started going through cardiac arrest and died. Yeah, that was kind of weird. Yeah, but it was still a good movie. It was. <clears throat> Did you guys see any other summer movies? I saw the new Captain America, and I saw the new X Men as well. Oh, how how I haven't seen those. They any good? They're good. Okay. Uh, the X Men one was particularly good. I Captain heard America was good also. I heard that X Men is a really good movie. Mm-hmm. Do you uh, see what the next one's going to be? About Apocalypse. Age of Apocalypse. That's going to be tight. Um, I saw the Wolf of Wall Street. Was that a summer movie? Uh, maybe last year. <laughs> Not quite. No, I think it was like, it released this year, like in February or something. It was really good. No, it was before, it was before this year. Uh, was it, it was in the award season. 
Mm. Oh yeah, with um, American Hustle mm -hmm. and Django. No. Oh. <laughs> Did you see Waffle Wall Street? Not yet. It's really good. Cool. I like Jonah Hill. Get to see it. Did you get to see his penis in that movie? It's a prosthetic. Oh, okay. What? <laughs> it's kind of like uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, the drugs they take, but it's not nearly as... It's not bad? No. <laughs> okay. It's not like the whole psychedelic type thing? Is that what you're trying to get yeah. at? Yeah. Yeah. There's one scene where he's trying to get home that's kind of weird. I mean, that was a great scene, the whole the, the whole build-up to it and how yeah. it played out. But that was kind of trippy. Yeah, it was. Because he, there, there was, they did it one way how he thought it happened, and then they, they showed it the second time where it, how it actually happened. That was kind of cool. Yeah. I want to find some of those lemons. Is that what they called them? Rosebuds? No. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Too. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> the pills, they called them lemons. Oh, like Quaaludes or whatever? Quaaludes, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that was real big back in the 80s. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's kind of what they were getting at because there was only a few of them left in the world. Oh. That's why they were kind of like a, a novelty or a rarity. They, I guess it's a sleeping pill that some Indian doctor created. Mm. And they found out if you force yourself to stay awake after 15 minutes, you get this incredible high off of it. <laughs> but they're very dangerous. Mm. Uh, Anthony Kiedis talks a lot about him in his book that oh, he wrote. Really? Yeah. Always talking about quaaludes. Hmm. 